Hey guys, this is Chris Butt with Wildlife Taxidermy. Today we're going to basically illustrate how to bring your trophy home back into Tennessee and be within the guidelines of the chronic wasting disease laws. Uh, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to show you how to get your whole deer down to the skull, ready to bring back into Tennessee. And what we would like to illustrate are basically the key cuts that will keep you in guidelines and in good shape, form and fashion with your taxidermist. You're gonna start from the knee and you're gonna come up the back of the leg and you're gonna stay on the point where the white meets the brown. There's a perfect line. So if you'll come from the knee and come up the leg and then right where you hit the armpit, there's some white hair where it meets the brown hair. You're gonna come up to the armpit hit that spot where the hair changes, and you're gonna angle back on a 90, straight back up to about halfway back to animal. Now, you're gonna ring around the animal about halfway back, and you don't have to go that far, but that's just a good measurement to show that you're not gonna cut the cape short. So you're gonna come up the knee, armpit, back to your ring around the body, and then you're ready to skin everything out. You're gonna pull it all the way down to the head. Once you get the cape all the way down to the head, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can cut it off at the joint, right behind the skull, or you can use a Sawzall, which is a lot easier, and that's what, that's what we did right here. We've detached the head from the, from the body and we are now ready to cape the hide off of the skull and proceed to get this ready to come back in the, in the Tennessee and the, get all the leg, legalities uh, perfect. So what we're gonna do, once you've got to this point, this animal is, a, this is whitetail and this is a short incision and the short incisions are, are common uh, in the world of today's taxidermy. Uh, make note on some of your big stuff. It is more of a pain to skin your animal out and have a short incision. So on some of your big stuff, you may not, you may not do that. But this is whitetail, this is a short incision, and this is where we're starting from. The short incision down the back of the neck is probably six to eight inches. It comes up to here, right on the crown of the skull. This one goes to the left antler, this one goes to the right antler. From there, it allows us to go around each antler and continue to free the cape. So I've already done this side, I've already done this ear. And once you cut through the ear, this is what you're looking for. There's a, there's, you leave all the meat, all the ear butt in the ear. You reach the ear canal, which is a little hole, and it sits right in the, on the base of the head. So that's what you wanna see when you cut through. You don't want to cut it way up through here. You want to cut it off right there. So we've already freed this ear up on this side. I'm going to start by freeing up some of the cape around the antler. There's basically two ways to get it off the antler. And one way is once you get your cuts made to the antler and actually get it started, you can use a screwdriver in around the antler with a hammer and you can actually chisel your way around that. You're not so much cutting it as much as you're pulling it off around the base of the skull, uh, the base of the antler. Uh, what that allows is for you not to cut the hide. But what I've started using is a hook bill knife. It's a little two and a half inch paring knife. And that for me is really easy to actually just cut uh, the cape around the, the base of the antlers. So taking your time, you can do that without cutting the cape. One important thing I would like to add, if you're not using a screwdriver and you are using a knife, to be sure and stay right against that pedicle. Because one thing that makes it hard for your taxidermist, if you are mounting the deer, is the fact that if you cut all this up and it's not one uniform piece, it makes it hard to go back around the antlers. So you gotta be careful of that. When you're, when you're skinning an animal out, everything that you free up, it's kinda like a a give and take relationship. You'll come to a stopping point and you'll have to get somewhere else. So we're now getting close to the ear butt. This is the ear. 
this is the head, so our air butt lays right in here. There you go. For anybody wanting to know, I mean, as far as for skinning deer and caping deer, these are $6 Victor Knox knives. They're both classified as a pairing knife. That one's a, probably a three and a half, four inch blade. That one's a two, two and a half inch hook nose. Uh, order them by the dozens. They're, they're great. That's all we use pretty much in here. Once, you, once you've got it free around the antlers and you come to the eye, it is probably the most important part. There's a lot of connective tissue underneath that brow bone that leads to the eyelid, the inner eyelid. And you need that for your, your taxidermist needs that for the mount. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stay right on that brow bone. And every time you cut, there's gonna be some more tissue that gives way. So you're just gonna keep cutting. You're gonna be able to see the eyeball. You don't cut through just yet. You just keep staying right on that eyebrow. It'll keep giving and giving. Then once you've got to the back of it, you can go ahead and cut through. So we're through right now. And you know what you'll see when you get through there, there's a lot of eyelid that really sits back underneath that bottom of the skull socket. You should always stay right on the brow bone. When you reach the tight spot, you gotta take it down a little bit more. So we're gonna free some more up on the chin. So now we got all that. We can actually reach the inner part of the tear duct so now we got all that freed, we're gonna stay right on the bone. Actually gonna pull that eyelid where you can get way up in the inside. Let's see this. And there's a little bone right in here. You're gonna, you're gonna stay right on that bone. See how far you have to be back in there. So you come to the right on the point of the socket and take it off right there. And you think you got it past the hard part. However, the tear duct is right there. So you're still going to come in here, get as deep as you can. And you have successfully skinned out the tear duct. Once you've got it past the tear ducts, you basically pulled it mostly the way down the face. And I just want to show you something on the mouth. That's where that's the corner of the mouth. That's the that's the the inside of his lower jaw. You see we're not where we're at right here, it's quite a ways back. That's where you want to be. You don't want to go until you see, his, see the corner. Go ahead and you got quite a bit of, if you just take that inside of that jaw from underneath the eye to there, just go ahead and cut it about halfway through. That'll ensure that you have plenty of, plenty of lip inside there. And you see his teeth don't freak out because that's what you're going to see. And when you, once you take that off the head, you're staying right on the top of the jawbone. That's making sure you get all that, that bottom lip. You do the same with the top. You're gonna get to where you can see the top of the edge of his palate. And you just cut that.
That's the inside of the palate, top of the roof of the mouth. And this is where your lip connects to that. You pretty much want to draw a line right through there. Then you'll reach the nasal canal. On the skull, everything bone down through there. It's just like your human nose. You get towards the end of it, that, oh, that's cartilage. See that? That's bone, that's cartilage. So you can, you can bring it on down a little bit, but you don't want to, you don't want to go too far. So a good measure just to be safe, and your taxidermist can take off the rest. You can bring it down about halfway to the end, and you can go ahead and cut through that. Cut down to the bone. And once you hit that bone, you'll take that cartilage, skin it on out. I'm gonna come around to the end of the mouth, top roof of the mouth. Flip him over. And he's a free bird. So there, we got every bit of that lip on the inside. And that's what we need. So then you got the bottom jaw. You're gonna do the same thing. Stay right on the top where it meets the inside of the mouth. Right where it meets the bottom teeth, high as you can. And you got a free bird. And that is completely caked. You're not finished for chronic wasting disease. We have our cape free. We now have our skull. Uh, we just got done caping it out, so we're fairly certain that, that we are gonna mount the animal. Uh, if there is any question, you have two options. And option one is if he's for sure mounter, then you're gonna cut him. And you're gonna cut the skull plate that would resemble something like that. What you're doing, you're leaving, you're leaving the horns attached to the top of the skull plate so your taxidermist can attach it back to the mount. And the way that you do that, let's take our live example. Let's take this example. Let's look at this. There's basically two methods with a sawzall or with a bandsaw. Chances are you do not have access to a bandsaw. So if you're doing it with a sawzall, this is the angle that you want. You're gonna come down, you're gonna cut straight through the skull, about right there all the way down. So just draw a line right in front of the eye socket or right through the eye socket, either one. You can, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cut it back to here anyway. So just go through the eye socket, cut it down, and then the angle that you want is from here straight back. So basically you're gonna you're gonna come in a straight line underneath the antlers. You're gonna go straight across the top side of the eye socket. If you're not gonna cut it and you're undecided and you have access to means to clean up your skull, some people, if they don't know, they're gonna they're gonna do a Euro. And once you do a Euro, you can always convert it you can always convert it to a cut for mount. But if you're gonna do the Euro, you have got to have a way to clean it up. And the way to do that is you know, to boil it or use a pressure washer. I haven't mentioned it before. Some people use beetles, some people use bugs. Uh, that would only be in a controlled facility. So you don't have, you know, that's really out of the equation because you don't have access to that to bring it back in. So boil it or pressure wash. They're going to be your two ways. And again, if you do the Euro, this is, we got a hanger here, so it kind of blocks it, but that's the brain canal. All that has to be clean. You'll look down through there and you'll see a hole. 
This, this is a European skull that has already been completely finished. This one has been bleached. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be bleached to come back in the state, but it does have to be free of all brain matter and all tissue. So essentially you will be looking at a clean skull minus the, minus the bleach. Also, you know, a good note, if you don't feel like you wanna do it or don't feel like you can do it or don't have the utensils to do it, then you also probably need to go to a taxidermist out of state in order to bring that deer back in. What I want to reemphasize is this stuff is not easy. The reason I know how to do it, the reason I can do it with almost my eyes closed is because I do it every day. So you need to know if you're doing it on your own or you're using somebody else. If you're doing it on your own, you need to have practice. Uh, you need to learn, you need animals to practice on and you don't need to practice on your trophy of a lifetime. So that's just my two cents worth. Chris Butt with Wildlife Taxidermy. Um, I hope you have a great season.